Well, this is uh, my institute at present I work and the institute I have worked, the Patel Chest, Safai and KG Medical University where I spent about four decades of life there. Started as a student in 1970 and became professor and head in 90s and remained there till 2011. Well, my memory with this uh, great person, I must say, Modi ji, maybe about 15 to 20 years back, the first time I met Modi ji very closely when Rajurian was introduced in Delhi, it was inaugurated in Delhi. I was also a guest of honor there. Then I had a lot of talk about, so that speaks about this gentleman, how he was a simple man, but he was behind everything that new innovations and new researches should be there. So my objective for next 20 minutes, I believe, would be to uh, how much is the magnitude, how, what's the new in diagnosis, what's the new in treatment, and finally, a little bit, what is future is going to happen in tuberculosis, and finally, some one or two take home messages. Tuberculosis, when I teach tuberculosis, I think many of the students are sitting in the back. They might have heard me in many of the conferences. It's a 100% curable disease. This is not that, this I am saying after 40 years, after four decades of experience, treating thousands and thousands provided patients, provided it, good treatment is prescribed and it is taken also. It is not only prescription that is going to help, I always say and there will be hardly any relapse and hardly any drug resistance. But it is very unfortunate, 1.8 million, 18 lakh people died last year in 2015 globally. In India also around 5 lakh people died last year. This is the latest figure available just released by WHO 2016 and during this two talks I believe 40 people must have died with tuberculosis. You don't think that why this is happening. We have, we, we, you just heard a lot of drug resistance like MDR, TB, MDR means when resistance to two most potent anti-TB drugs like INH and rifampicin. And then further we have not stopped. We have XDR, TB means MDR, TB plus resistance to one of the fluoroquinolones, which is actually misused right and left by us, and then one of the second line injectables. Even complete drug resistance, a lot of reports started coming. So a lot of drug resistance, I'll not uh, bore with you figures, but it is estimated, again, in this latest 2016, that about 580,000 MDR cases globally and, and in India also around 1,30,000 every year. And, uh, in the, uh, and even XDRTB is reported for more than 117 countries and 9.5% of MDRTB is supposed to be XDRTB. From India, a lot of reports started coming. And as I said, that emergence of total drug resistance has started because of the and the question comes very quickly that if it is a 100% curable disease, why these things are happening? And you have understood by now that, that it is uh, because of the poor control of clinical practices. I'll give you some one or two ex small examples. If somebody gets TB, where he goes? He goes to the either private sector or government sector. Today it is said that 50-50, even. And uh, TB management in public sector, you know the country has a national TB control program in name of RNTCP. And this is providing free drugs to all sorts of TB, TB patients like new cases, retreatment cases, MDR cases, XDR cases. And we have treated a lot of people through this program. 3.5 million life has been saved in last 20 years, but it's still 50% of the coverage is there. 50% pe pe patients of TB are outside the program. So a lot of things has to be done. In a private sector where people have a lot of belief, I would like to quote you one of the paper which published last year 
what is the quality of tuberculosis care in India? It was a systematic review, and that last line, if you read, that suboptimal quality of care. So it's still in 2016, I can say the management of tuberculosis in some of the pockets are not proper. <clears throat> That's why yeah, I said it is poor either the control practices or clinical practices is responsible. Now, as far as diagnosis is concerned, what's new has come? 2016 will be remembered for new things in tuberculosis. And you know for diagnosis of TB, you know that Mantus test, IGRA, IGRA has uh, not 2016, but it's as good as it only tells you that person is infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Whether you do a simple tuberculin test or you do the, the IGRAs, quantiferon, gold, or, but it simply tells you that person is infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It cannot have any idea about disease. Bacteriology, no doubt, is a gold standard even today. Radiology, it, it is a lot of uh, sensitive it is there, but its specificity is not there. Antibodies based test, you know, already has been banned. And histopathology and molecular biology. Molecular biology, I'll, I'll spend a little more time that what is new in molecular biology that, that, uh, that, that, <coughs> that I will. So how to diagnose MDR TB? This was a simple TB. MDR TB, which is a talk of town today, that uh, uh, you can have history, you can have radiology, you can have molecular biology, but uh, still the gold standard is bacteriology, that is culture and sensitivity. And uh, as far as b culture and gold standard, culture and sensitivity is concerned, I would like to share with you that although it is a gold standard, but if you read the third line, there is an in vivo and in vitro correlation is reliable for only few drugs, not for all drugs. What as in practice what we are doing, people are asking how many drugs we do a culture and sensitive uh, DST. People say 12, 15, whatever drugs. But you know, reliability is only for INH, uh, say rifampicin, INH, injectables, and fluoroquinone. That is a good point because we need only these four drugs either to decide that person is sensitive TB, a person has MDR TB, or if you know the resistance to fluoroquinolone and injectables, you can also know the XDR TB. So only those drugs which are really required, they are reliable. Rest of the drugs are not very reliable and uh, <coughs> I can talk to you for hours and hours that uh, four labs reporting differently for a one patient so though it is a gold standard, what I'm trying to say, but still you have to, you have to do not accept them uncritically. You have to use your mind what type of patients you are seeing, whether there is a possibility of drug resistance or not. Newer tests for MDR TB, you know, you must have heard line probe assay, which can diagnose INH and rifampicin resistance within two days. Forget those days where drug resistance used to be defined by in six to eight weeks' time. Now, line probe gives you diagnosis in 48 hours. Another test, what you call it as expert, gene expert, which is very popular nowadays in India also, it can diagnose MD rifampicin resistance. And when we say rifampicin resistance, it is taken as a surrogate marker for MDRTB. And gene expert can tell you, based on the molecular biology, that there is a rifampicin resistance and it is taken as a, and rifampicin resistance by this test can be diagnosed within 90 minutes. Although in the program side, it may take two to five days time. But in the lab, if you are sitting, it can tell you within 90 minutes, person is rifampicin resistant means person has a drug MDR TB. And uh, so, uh, so even 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 uh, this gene expert has been has been useful to diagnose even extra pulmonary TB, like you see the cerebrospinal fluid, lymph nodes. Gastric lavas and aspirations, their specificity is around 80%, but 
But in a pleural fluid, the specificity is not very, the sensitivity is not very high. It is around 40 to around 40 percent. So some of the, these tests you can use in extra pulmonary. You only thing, one caution you have to always think of that uh, if the prevalence of rifampicin resistance means suppose you get a gene expert done in a new case where chances of rifampicin resistance is low, then the positive predictive value is just about 50 percent. So in a new patient, what is message? In a new patient, if you find gene experts showing rifampicin resistance, it's a 50-50. But where chances of resistance is very high means patient has taken treatment and that is about 15 percent, then positive predictive value goes around 90 percent. That, that limitation you have to realize. And uh, <coughs> line probe assays, when it came, it came for INH and rifampicin. Now in 2016, line probe assays has been endorsed by WHO just about two months back it, for diagnosis of XDRTB, means for resistance against fluoroquinolones and second line injectables. So uh, that is the one case I have just uh, focused for you that if you just depend upon the radiology and clinical symptoms, you can see through this case how you can be mistaken about the things. This was the patient who had a known case of asthma, but had developed hemoptysis. Hemoptysis in India usually taken as, uh, as a synonym, as many, uh, many, many doctors feel that it is tuberculosis. Somebody advise him anti-TB drug. But after two months, you'll agree with me that if you compare both the x-rays, x-rays has, radiologically, patient has deteriorated. So somebody thought that it could be an MDR-TV in 2004, but anyhow, when he came, he was referred to us to tell that whether he has MDR-TV or not. He was investigated further. Point to be noted, eosinophil was 30 percent, his sputum was negative, Ig and IgG against Aspergillus fumigatus was highly positive. His skin tests were positive, and finally there was central bronchiectasis. They are supposed to be quite diagnostic for allergic. So what I'm trying to say, if the diagnosis is essentially based on history and radiology without sputum, without culture, then you are likely to commit mistakes. What's the new in treatment? Now, as far as treatment is concerned. The last guideline of TB treatment came in 2009. It has already expired. So very soon, I think this year or early 17, you are going to have a new guideline. So, but that guideline says you start with four drugs and continue with two or three drugs. That's the usual practice for new cases. <coughs> Even retreatment group start with five drugs, four drugs, and three drugs. That has been retained till date. I hope some of you must have heard the standard of TB care in India that talks about how TB should be managed in India. This is a mandate for private sector as well as for the government also. Both has to adopt finally and the government, many of points, government is trying to adopt it. And uh, that uh, new TB patients, they say same thing, four drug to start with and three drug in a continuation phase. That's uh, that's said. Doses frequency, ideally it should be daily, but in situations you may want compliance and other issues are problem. Previously treated patient, they have been returned as 5, 4, 3 drug. MDR-TB, new thing has come in MDR-TB. Only one point I would like to stress, if, if some of you are managing MDR-TB, it's very difficult to manage. Now we have got two short of regimen. You must have heard about MDR-TB that there's a two years treatment. Now 2016 is a year when you conventional treatment and short course treatment. Now conventional treatment was at least you use four new drugs. And this was the, this is the even drug classification has been changed in TB recently in 2016. Now it is divided into A, B, C, D, and A is a fluoro means fluoroconolone, B is injectables, C is like ethionamide, cyclosine, and other drugs. Linozolid and clofazamine has been brought into group C, 
and then iodine drugs have been divided into D1, D2. If you are anybody is interested in detail, you can go on to the WHO website. You can find all these. This is the latest uh, classification was done in 2016. How to choose a drug for MDR-TB? That's also very written rule. At least five drugs likely to be effective, including the paracetamide is one drug which you can take from the primary line of drug. Otherwise, four, four new drugs for second line of drug. And this is the regimen which is government of India has prescribed. Is you canamycin, levo, ethiocyclo. So four new drugs have been added. Not that one, two are less than that. And another message you should be clear that once you started injectable in a MDR-TB, that is canamycin, Duration is six to nine months. Forget those 90 days formula. I think Professor Tandon is, is sitting. In our days also, that there's a 90 days formula for TB patient. Those you have to, you have to forget. Here once we treat MDR TB, the injectable is minimum of six to nine months. And total duration is two years. Keeping this, that this is a very cumbersome process. So WHO this year, again in 2016, about two months back, has come up with a shorter MDR regime. A lot of extensive studies has been done in Bangladesh and many other countries. And with that shorter regimen, this is a 9 to 12 months regimen. That consists of, again, injectable, 4 to 6 months, moxie, proethionamide, ethionamide, clofazamine. So these are four new drugs. Again, rules remain the same, same that you have to add four new drugs. And these are the doses, and uh, likewise, you have to choose drugs for XDRTB. What is going to happen in future as far as TB is concerned? Let me share with you with three, four slides. Uh, there are many phase three trials are happening. This slide shows that rifapentin trial, delamanid, these are the new drugs, petromanid, betaquilin, you have heard about these drugs. So a lot of phase three trials are happening. And idea of these phase three trials, the first trial which has failed was that people think that by using moxifloxin in place of INH or ethambutal in a four drug regimen, can we reduce the duration of treatment to four months? But the final result has, is out, and that talks that six month duration even is a gold standard. When you are using even fluoroconolones, latest fluoroconolones, that's one message. Second message, what I'm trying to say is that this regimen, what we call it as a stand trial, this is a phase three trial is happening globally, it contains three drugs, PA824 is a new drug, Moxie is an old drug, and pyrogenamide. And if you read these three regimens, what message is given? There are a lot of trials are happening around this, these three, three or four drugs. And they say whether you are suffering from sensitive TB, whether you are suffering from drug resistant TB, regimen is going to be one finally. It may include even beta -colin. In some of the studies, they have included like B, P, A, M, Z, means beta -colin also. There, they are trying to reduce the duration of sensitive TB to three to four months. And the same regimen will be active against the drug resistance, say MDR, and even XDR TB for six to nine months. That is the what is going to happen maybe in next two, three years. Because by the end of 2018 and 19, all the trial results will be out. And hopefully, that then the treatment duration can be shortened for sensitive TB to three to four months, and for MDR TB, for six to eight months. That's the future of TB management. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I have come to the end of my presentation. And I said certain take home messages. You know that everything is changing in TB. Forget those 90 days formula. Many of the, the, many of the patients, when I have written about five, seven years back, the canamycin for six, seven, eight, nine months, many of the drug stores, they refused to give those injections because they were not aware. 
They said, no, no, only 90 injection, not beyond 90. So that rule has gone. You know the newer diagnostics and newer treatment has to come. It's coming out, it's being studied. Molecular diagnostic, you have heard, a lot of role to play for early diagnosis of tuberculosis and even for drug-resistant tuberculosis. Till that time, I usually say that since, since new uh, since that time, that new proper diagnostic tools and treatment are available, please, whatever you have, use them effectively. Use them for a desired period of length to prevent the death, to prevent the drug-resistant TB. With this, thank you very much for very patient listening.